You are looking at blueprint only mega factory in Sages Factory. With blueprints in Sages Factory, we can build functional, good looking and even easy to handle factories. They can have full production lines, finished exteriors and modular nature. So today, I want to focus on exteriors for those blueprint factories. I want to go into how to expand blueprint modular nature, how to make an easy connection setups integrated into factory exteriors, and I want to explore what are the main architectural styles being adapted into blueprint designs in Satisfactory. I will show how to make those in the game with every tip and trick. So even if Blueprint Factories is not your jam, you can always adapt those tips and tricks to a bigger factories. So let's go! There will be several main architectural styles used in this video. Obvious one would be Brutalism. Most of the time Brutalism is defined by a non-human scale of architecture and exposed structural elements such as concrete and steel in the buildings after 1950s. Brutalism as the name is associated with the French phrases Baton Brut, which is raw concrete, and Art Brut, which is raw art. So, yeah, and I have no idea what I'm doing with the French. So yeah, nothing brutal in English and Brut Champagne have more in common with the term than English word brutal. Then we have Modernism, that is spanning all the way from the beginning of the 20th century to the 1980s. Main difference here is that Modernism is not about raw concrete or exposed structure, but rather about modern materials making previously impossible structures – stronger, lighter and taller. And here where the next style emerges. Art Deco. That style was popular style of 1920s and 1930s, especially for uh, skyscrapers. Modern materials allow for a taller structure and bigger windows. And obviously oil money allow for very excessive decoration. Major decoration themes were sunbeams, chevrons, zigzags and florals. And then we have one of the lesser known styles, that is Bauhaus, which is named after German school from 1990 to 1933. Bauhaus' approach to design is an attempt to unify artistic vision with the principle of mass production and emphasis on function. Concrete is your first one-stop shop when it comes to building boxes in Satisfactory. There are several advantages to concrete material in the game over other types. In particular, you can overlap several concrete walls into each other and have next to nothing in the visual issues when it comes to the fighting. This opens up numerous combinations, but our first step would be combination of triangular 8 meter walls and glass windows. You just place concrete pieces first and then by using the zoop mode of constructor tool, you can fill up overlapping space with windows. This 40% window structure in particular makes this design more of a post-war modernist design than a brutalist one. And if we account for the color decorations, it would be a variation of Bauhaus design. But for now, we have a bigger fish to fry. We need to fit machinery into a blueprint and this dictates exterior to an extent. In this particular design, I used smelters, foundries, assemblers and constructors. And all of those machines have minimal height requirement. Assemblers and foundries in particular are a bit bigger and they require more headroom. This is why I opt for free level factory design in 4x4 blueprint designer. I start on the ground level with 1 meter walls, make 8 meter worth of windows, then repeat this two more times while placing 1 meter concrete foundations as floors behind 1 meter walls. This will give us 3 levels with 9 and 8 meters of ceiling to work with. Plenty of room even for assemblers. To break up overall repeating pattern, I swapped angled walls every level between upstroke and downstroke. This way one can easily imitate some beam shape that is more reminiscent of Art Deco style. And on the top of the blueprint I want to have complete roof, especially when this building is absorbed from the top. For this I am using one extra 1 meter wall and I remove inner foundation pieces and replace them with 2 meter angled roof pieces. With exterior facade mostly done, we need to bring some sort of variety for building silhouette. And while I was planning and building my blueprint factories, I realized that they not really require 4x4 in majority of cases. And this opens up a clever opportunity when it comes to overall shape of the building. One can cut the corner 45 degrees. 
and to make everything flush, we need to follow these simple steps. Place three road barrier pieces at an angle. Use 4 meter wall on the side of outer barrier piece. Bring the wall up at least once and then delete the lower wall. Repeat the same procedure with opposite barrier. Aim for the side and bring the wall up. Now you have ideal 45 degree angle corner flush with two other walls. Clean and easy. And with some factories one can even make two angle corners per blueprint. For me, this is a really important part of every single blueprint factory. I prefer to have labeled intake rooms and just never go inside of an actual factory. I just separate at least 4 meters from the rest of the factory with the wall and the good tip here would be just to use top part as extra decorative opportunity. By leaving gaps on the top we can have the ladder going all the way up to the roof. And with the intake rooms it's pretty obvious that we need to use foundation or sandwich layer to feed our factories from beneath. The last bits are exterior decoration. For this I prefer to use painted beams. Just make sure to use custom color palettes for every single blueprint design because well you never know when you will change those standard palettes while custom selection stays baked into the blueprint itself. And yes standard color swatches will apply to your blueprints just like they apply to any machine you built in satisfactory. For this design I'm using a painted beam line on the top and split it every 8 meters. In this fashion I can use color palettes to color code different parts of the factory and if you are bad with the colors and choices and color palettes overall, well there is always those like website creation tools that allow to just select the base color and you will have easier color palette generation for the colors that are working together. Next step at building design is how you will stack said blueprints. While in some cases one blueprint is enough, in other cases you want two, four or even more stacks for the bigger production chains. This is why this particular design can be easily mirrored 180 degree for the double production rate and also this implied no real necessity for having four walls. Only three walls is necessary. And this design can be easily stacked in four-way symmetry, bringing the amount of the walls down to two. So as example, you can see that this blueprint previously featured on my channel had production rate of 22.5 reinforced iron plates per minute. And with mirror symmetry, it can produce 45 reinforced iron plates per minute per building. And with four-way symmetry, this number go all the way up to 90 items per minute. Quite impressive. All the connections stay separate and you have no need to make internal connection between stacks. And this is only one of those like easier types of blueprint stacking, there would be more. But before that, let's explore other designs that work well with this first type of stacking. 8 meter angled walls allow for numerous combinations. Aside sunbeams we can make upstroke or downstroke triangles or chevrons. Works quite well with a dual angle design and then we have an angled lines wrapping around the building. And we can play around not only with 8 meter angled walls, for example with combination of 2 meter angled walls you can make quite unusual chevron shapes. And you can go all the way for the corner window designs for a bigger scale. And here once again we can use a very important tool introduced with the update 8. With keybind H or the notch tool one can fix walls in place and adjust their position by using arrow keys. This opens up quite the opportunity when it comes to the designs. Also there is often this issue with Z fighting between foundation pieces and glass walls and for with this usually one can just bring up the foundation 1 meter back with the notch tool and avoid any Z fighting altogether. And the notch tool also opened up quite an interesting design opportunity when we can make the small vertical slit windows. And this reminds me a bit of that... Uh, prison skyscraper in Chicago, although that one had like window slits that is 13 centimeters wide for well obvious reasons, while well, here we have almost 2 meters of glass, so yeah close but not close enough, uh, and I think it will work well with bigger design not 4x4 but well it's still a design. Also when you create something repetitive like this, well making small selection of the wall as a blueprint itself is a natural shortcut, then you can just stack them together for the whole wall, save it as another blueprint, place all the four walls in the blueprint as a separate blueprints, you know blueprints, 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 <laughs> too much of this word. Now we have the facade and we can add some extra detail that we could not really do with the blueprints because well blueprints uh, doesn't like those like uh, beams on the edge but you still can place them. 
and in this case I opted for the steel beams in case in the window slits and also in many cases you will find angles of the blueprint being very difficult aesthetically and in majority of blueprints I just used angled steel beams to cover up Z fighting and any gaps. This particular design make for quite an intimidating tower and our next step would be tower designs and tower stacking. Stacking machinery in a tower was quite popular even before update 7 blueprint release. Nevertheless, it have some challenges not found in previous type of blueprint stacking. When you design the factory production chain, you will reach limiting factors, such as the throughput of your belts. Exceed this limit and you will need to add an extra belt to your blueprint, which is not great. And there are two main ways you can address this challenge. First, you can make internal connection shaft and weave your belts through the machinery to the next level, effectively making vertical manifold limited in height by the throughput of your belt. For example, this blueprint producing 15 modular frames per minute per stack can be only stacked 3 times vertically. It is limited by the mark for belt and input of 150 iron ore per stack, clocking at 450 iron ore with 3 levels. But as always, you can be smart even with the towers and stack several in staggered shape resulting in quite unique shapes. Another good example is this tall standalone tower for total output of 270 smart plating per minute. 12 stacks of blueprints, tall, boring, but well sometimes you want to have something like this to have some sort of like architectural dominant in your factory, so why not? And overall I really consider that the art deco is the quite suiting as a style when you want to deal with the towers. And now I want to explore 4 or 5 different art deco shapes easily constructed with the painted beams. With art deco there are several buildings that are quite notorious. In particular, Sharon Shapes from Boston Avenue Methodist Church had a huge inspiration for this blueprint build. For this design, I am using big concrete pillars on the corners. Then I construct vertical painting beams by skipping exactly 1 meter between each pillar. And then I just bring additional diagonal beams from the sides. And to make the diagonal beams, well, you need to press R key when you're building painting beams and this will swap your mode from the default to diagonal and free form. To avoid uneven construction, make sure to keep track of the beam length. If you are doing it correctly, it should be always the same. As standalone construction, this huge chevron looks a bit off, but once you stack it multiple times, everything comes together. Next design challenge is to make the top to look not flat but visually striking, and over here we can stagger concrete pillars on the first level, then just construct even more smaller chevrons resembling the design of previously mentioned Boston Avenue Methodist Church, and technically I love to call this type of the blueprint roof as a crown, and there would be a couple more in this video. Next Art Deco shape was not really inspired by an Art Deco building, but it was rather inspired by a very interesting fusion of Soviet architecture and Central Asian motifs. Formerly known as the Lenin Museum in Uzbekistan, the building was built in 1970 and was repurposed for State Museum of History of Uzbekistan. And this is not the only building in the area that looks more like an Art Deco building than the Soviet modernism as it was labeled, but seriously comrade, you could not name something as American style of architecture in Soviet Union in 1970. As previously we want to stagger our painted beams 1 meter from each other and indent them inside of the blueprints and to create angles I create small pillars spanning all 32 meters of height and then remove inner part leaving 8 meters at the top and the bottom. Then I repeat it several times staggering pillars with the painted beams and then I start construction of diagonal beams by snapping them to the pillars. Then I remove pillars and now you can just bring up down the final painted beams. This is an easier approach to creation of angled beams and patterns. Uh, for example, over here I have done almost the same pattern on the edge just by only using painted beams and no small pillars. It just takes more time and effort than the pillar method. And with variation of this shape, I have made my rubber and plastic factories. Quick note on the blueprint stacking. There are two different blueprints stuck back to back and then they are aligned into a horizontal manifold. And better yet, this horizontal manifold is stacked four times on top of each other, 
So in this manner, every blueprint have only one decorative phase, bringing the amount of use parts down. Yes, quite a lot of stacking, but actually it's quite simple, and the challenge of the design horizontal manifolds like this isn't what you will do with the sides. If we do nothing, then the sides will be full of pipes and conveyor lifts, beating the purpose of blueprint decoration to some extent. So this is why I usually create very simple decorative covers. I prefer not to go overboard with the detail and in general follow a bigger shapes. Remember, it is just a cover, not an actual wall. Also another important bit for the design is to break up the flat top with yet another crown. This one was inspired by a Russian Academy of Science in Moscow that was constructed partially in 1970. And it have an official nickname of uh, Golden Brains, uh, because well, Russian humor. A bit unfortunate that we couldn't really paint steel beams into another metallic colors, but well, even with painted beams, idea still works. So we have sorted one type of blueprint stacking and horizontal manifolds with their covers. But what if you want to cover the tower? Here is an example of very different type of blueprint stacking. This is a sorting facility encompassing the quartz miner. And then there is a pure quartz refinery composed from 6 blueprints as a tower. Interesting concept at work here is the intake split. It splits into 3 parts into 3 directions in the lowest blueprint. And then, every 2 blueprints, factory rotates 90 degrees to align with new set of intakes and outputs down below. Technically, connection made with conveyor lifts and this needs some sort of extension and decorative cover. Once again, a combination of angled walls allow for a fancy brutalism and with painted beams we can make this awesome looking flower decoration. This decoration is inspired by Bullock's Wilshire building constructed in 1929. I aim for 16 meters by 16 meters frame, rectangulars on the perimeter are 3 meters by 6 meters, then I connect corners diagonally forming the center of flower and finish it up by forming outer leaves of the flower. As a color thing I use oxidized bronze color because well, real thing is constructed from the bronze and it was oxidized. And after all this, I just do two types of covers with conveyor lift holes and without. And this will allow to me have an extra option to avoid some extra jitter where possible. I think by this point this video is already too long for well YouTube comfort. Before I wrap up uh, the whole thing, I want to showcase one more type of stacking and how to work with that type of architecture. We explored symmetry stacking with no internal connections, we had tower stacking with internal manifolds, tower stacking with external connections, and also we have explored horizontal manifolds. But what if you want to combine horizontal manifold and vertical stacking for the dual blueprint? With horizontal manifold stacking, we can indent sidewall 1 meter and have nice and easy way to access connection points. But verticality adds an extra layer of connections, and there is not always a room for internal connections and manifolds inside blueprints. And making independent covers is not the only option, especially when we are talking only about two levels. Here is previously featured on this channel computer factory consisting from dual blueprints. Lower blueprint have majority of machinery while top blueprint house two manufacturers for crystal oscillators. The size of bottom blueprint have manifold for input and output. Meanwhile, I have small indentation on the back and place conveyor lift connections. This way connecting blueprints is as easy as clicking 8 times and it still looks like something incorporated into the design. And you can always find more about this particular case in one of the videos on my channel. This was numerous ways for facade decoration and blueprint stacking in Satisfactory. Stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for watching, give this video architecturally correct thumbs up, and until the next time, have a nice one, and Yakis, out!